Hi, I'm Tucker Thompson from T2P TV, and welcome back to the ISAF Nations Cup Grand Final here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. We've completed one day of qualifying, and so far the event's only returning champion, Claire Loire from France, is undefeated. We are sailing in Elliott's uh, boat of the Olympics. It's a good uh, part of uh, our preparation of uh, our campaign. So if we make a result, it will be good for us. We get all the victory yesterday. So today we have four match and uh, we expect to do uh, uh, as uh, we did yesterday. We see what happens, but we will do as best. Well, there's a lot more sailing to go in these early qualifying rounds. And as we join the action on the water, it is breezy and very cold. Rough conditions are just part of the challenge of top level match racing as we join the action between Juliana Semp from Brazil and she'll face Ru Wang from China at the gun. Semp could be in trouble. Can she tack? At the committee boat end, Wang closes the door and says no. And that sets Wang up for an early lead. In the match behind them, Rita Goncalves from Portugal and Sharon Ferris Choate from Canada are exchanging blows at the pin end, 15 seconds to go. Goncalves in trouble at the pin, 3-2, one, she, she is definitely over, but Ferris Choate has to jive around. Sparks are flying. Goncalves takes an early lead over Ferris Choate while downwind Wang leads Sim. The action is within one boat length. Ferris Choate now tacks in front of Goncalves on her lee bow. Port starboard again, and Ferris Choate just crosses ahead of Goncalves at the top mark, but the pressure is on her from the Portuguese team downwind. The game is incredibly close downwind. Ferris Cho to windward wants to set up for the inside at the mark rounding, but we are above the ley line. The Canadian team jibes. She is on port. It's a vulnerable position. The zone hasn't been reached yet. Now she jibes back. Windward boat. Can she maintain this lead? Now we're past the ley line. This is tough for Ferris Cho. Double jibe. Goncalves. Bow forward, is the overlap broken? We're still in his zone. Oh, a blue flag for Ferris Choate. She's copped a penalty. Goncalves keeps Ferris Choate in check, upwind while in our first match. Downwind, Wang is only narrowly ahead of Sempt. Big move for Sam. She could be pulling ahead, and the finish line is only halfway down the run. Time is running out. The windward position has allowed Sam to pull forward, but she needs to break her overlap to the lay line into the finish and then call for a jive on Wang. Wang is keeping the overlap. Umpires in position to make the call, and the finish line is to the left. Right after the jibe, Semp wipes out, Wang pulls forward, and she wins the race. While downwind in the match behind them, it's Goncalves leading to the finish, and she's got a penalty over Ferris Choate. And that seals the deal as they rack up a win. Well, it might be cold, but the action is already starting to heat up this morning as we move into flight number two in the open division this time. It's Laurie Jury from New Zealand facing Enrique Haddad as they approach the line. There's the gun, Haddad over Jury at the start. Jury off to a one length lead, just barely, but Haddad has a penalty to undertake from the pre start. A 
Approaching the top mark, one length to go. Jury's bow forward, but Haddad is right in there. Jury had rights to tack around the mark. There was no overlap, but look how close Haddad from Brazil is. He's got enough range to attack on the run. Haddad has kept the game close, not enough to attack. He hasn't passed him, but within one length, the game now is to stay close to try and attack again on the final run. Haddad, never say die motto is what has kept him in this race. Just a few feet, half a length at most, separating these two as they round the top mark. Trouble for Haddad, the spinnaker pole is broken. They won't have it on the run. And with a penalty turn still to do, that comfortably gives Jury the win. We're back in the women's division this time. Whoa, with the action is hot with Price from Australia, Olivia Price and Claire Leroux from France. And a yellow flag already in the pre-start for Claire Leroux. The question now is, will Leroux try to get rid of her penalty with an offsetting one here in the pre-start or sail upwind and try to spin? Nothing has happened yet penalty-wise. It's Leroux, she'll lead to Leroux, Price to windward. Here's the gun. Both teams are hiking as hard as they can. Every ounce makes a difference. All the way up the beat, Lara had the boat in high mode. She couldn't tack. Finally, it's Price's turn on the ley line. Around the top mark, it's a big moment for Price being ahead of the event's defending world champion and giving her a penalty to boot. This is where Leroux tries to make her move. Jive thin on the starboard ley line for the leeward mark, forcing Price to jive, but Price is still ahead. At the leeward mark, it is still Price. And in impressive fashion, Olivia Price hands Claire Leroux her first loss of the regatta. Back on the starting line in the open division, Stratus Andreadis from Greece is facing Salal Tumsin from Turkey. Into the start, Tumsin pushes Andreadis over the line. Actually, both boats are. Now it's a question of who can get back in time. The gun is going off, but not before a blue flag has been given to Tumsin. Man, these two are just trading blows back and forth. Little dial down, Andre Adi shifts over to the left side, Tumsin behind, and with a penalty, tries to catch up. Strong performance so far for Andre Adi and a good set to boot. He's five lengths ahead of Tumsin. And Andre Adi takes the race. Behind them is quite a match between Jury and McGregor. This, the fight to the finish. It's the lured mark and Jury is barely hanging on to this lead. The umpires are close just in case the two exchange blows. Back into the pre-start we go with the women and the Chinese team. Wang will face South Africa's Dominique Provoyer. Oh, a surprise look even from Provoyer. She has copped the penalty. So Provoyer clearly up against the ropes with just a few minutes to go in this start. So the South Africans have their work cut out for them as the Chinese team luffs up and pins them away from the start. In a last ditch effort, Provoyer tries to close the door at the committee boat and there's the door, but it's certainly not slammed. Wang starts and now tries to push Provoyer over. Was she over or not? Clear, but in trouble. 
She'll tack away early with Wang on her windward hip. Upwind, it's a race to the ley line before Provoyer runs out of room and Wang tacks in front of her. At the set, great job for Wang and crew. Kite is up within a length of the mark. And so after leading all the way around the course, the finish goes to Ru Wang. On the starting line with the open division, we join Mads Edler from Denmark, the highest ranked skipper here, and Laurie Jury from New Zealand in the dial-up. Booms out, both boats in reverse. It's Jury backing up faster. A minute and 10 seconds to go. Jury pushes Ebler down below the starting line. Teams checking their watches for the final approach. Both bows early for the line and are luffing. Ebler looks like he's in a strong position, very tight to lure. Jury can't get the bow down or tack. That was the gun. It's quiet because of other boats finishing, but we are underway in this race. And although neither boat is moving, Ebler is in charge. He puts his bow down and pulls forward. And it's a tough start for Jury. And so Edler makes nice work of Jury while they sail upwind. Tarnacki is leading his race over Haddad to the finish. After one lap, Ebler is still in charge of his match, but it is very close. Remember Tarnacki? That's him with the messed up spinnaker. Well, the last time we left, he was ahead two penalties later, and the race belongs to Haddad. And finally, Mads Edler, who went into today undefeated, makes easy work of Laurie Jury. And so another day is done here at Sales for Boygan as the early qualifying rounds wind down. Tomorrow we'll decide who will move forward for the rest of the week and who will not. I'm Tucker Thompson from T2P TV. We'll see you then.